What about during the war years, which is obviously um, yes, well, your, I, your whole I, <coughs> training time period, really, isn't it? Yes, I started uh, about eight months, I suppose, before the war, and um, within six months we knew that war was coming, and the I remember students filling sandbags and putting them up against the hospital outside. Everyone was doing the same thing, you know, all around London. They um, uh, made a theatre in Wellington. Wellington was a kind of reception ward for, for bomb casualties. And then at the entrance to Wellington Ward, which was on the ground floor, was the main theatre. We were permanently hungry and tired. I remember during the war the trestle tables in the dining room and the long one with the food onto which we helped ourselves, but having been issued with our ration cards and rations, only two ounces of butter a week. But I loved toast with peanut butter and jam together. We drank rose hip syrup drinks. We had all the nourishment required. No wonder we kept slim. So what did they evacuate when you heard the siren, the warning oh, well. siren? Did they evacuate anybody? No, no. Every bed had a, another mattress, which was beside it. I was under the bed. So when the sirens went, you brought that mattress out and put it behind the bed so that the end of the mattress came over at the patient at the top. So that all the, it was protected from glass, flying glass. There was no other way they could do it. Did you feel worried? Frightened? Only once when I saw, once or twice I was frightened, I saw, um, I was on one of the smaller wards in the middle and I could see a parachute coming coming down and I didn't, at the time they were dropping these mines or something and I, I panicked a bit and then one of the nurses, we, we, we both realised that we, we were panicking and we said, stop it, stop it, stop it, we went in and um, we, we then went back into our wards and I don't know what happened to it but uh, it was some way away, over Tooting Way sort of and um, and of course we had an unexploded bomb in St George's itself it fell in the medical school it was a huge thing it would have destroyed the whole building but matron Hanks said that there was a blue light shining above St George's <laughs> and that's what saved it <laughs> but um, so <coughs> that night um, the whole hospital had to be evacuated, and it was all done within two or three hours. It was incredible, goodness, because they had the plans already in case of, of such an emergency. And Green Line buses were converted into ambulances, and they came round Hyde Park. And each one stopped outside the front door because everything went through the front door in those days, and um, they bus and the ambulance was filled up with patients and off it went and the next Green Line bus came. We were very happy in the war. It sounds mad, I know, but we were. We had some good laughs. Can you tell me about them? Well, I can only tell you the uh, alarm went and Mary and I looked out of our windows. We were next to each other and I said, oh, Mary. Look what's come out of the eminence. He's green. I said, he won't be alive long, you know, like that. When we got down there, he was working in a Piccadilly Circus. He was a painter. Uh, the blast from a bomb hit the thing of paint and it went right over him, so he was green when he came in. <laughs> Oh, Mary and I used to die with laughing. But you see, it helped us through the war. I do know where they actually evacuated the patients to. Was it right out of London? Or? Um, we had some emergency hospitals. We opened one at Slough, which was an old workhouse. Um, later on, they uh, put up Nissen huts, temporary Nissen huts as wards, which was much better. But to start with, we took over part of this workhouse and we had to live and feed with the workhouse nurses. 
And of course, St George's was always a bit snobbish in those days. <laughs> and we watched the, the balloons, the uh, barrage balloons. Yes, barrage balloons. Uh, and we, we saw fires, you know, um, in various parts of London. Every more every night it, it, it happened. Most, most, once the bombing started, it just went on. Mm. They, they admitted soldiers. They came back, back from France by train, you know, on the ferries or whatever. And the ambulance came up to us day and night with the soldiers still in their uniform, with bandages on, you know, and, and drips and things. And they had to have all their equipment with them. So when the stretcher arrived, there he was with his rifle his tin helmet, his boots, his backpack, the lot. And, of course, we had nowhere to put all this. But, I mean, we had to find somewhere till the army came and took it away. And this was at Atkinson Morning. Mm. Mm. Now, when the war came to an end, how did you celebrate? Well, I was on night duty on a women's ward and um, most of London seemed to have gone down to Piccadilly Circus and you know, hitched rides on taxis and American jeeps and what have you. But on night duty, obviously, we couldn't go very far in the hour we got because we would never have got back again against that crowd. But what we did was to go up on the roof and sort of join in the general celebrations and lean over and watch everybody going past underneath. And the students came up in a mass and they went up on the roof because they wanted to celebrate to all the world that St George had protected us all through the war. They got a green night lamp shade and an inspection lamp which they plugged in somewhere in the top floor and they went up the flagpole and they put St George's flag up with this light with the green shade round it to show that St George had protected St George's and that was the end of the war. <laughs>